The 1987 World Series was the 84th edition of Major League Baseball's Championship Series, and the conclusion of the 1987 Major League Baseball season. It was a best-of-seven playoff played between the American League AL champion Minnesota Twins and the National League NI champion St. Louis Cardinals. The Twins defeated the Cardinals four games to three to win the series. Twins pitcher Frank Viola was named as the 1987 World Series MVP. Minnesota was victorious in a World Series that was the first to feature games played indoors. It was also the first World Series in which the home team won every game. This happened again in 1991, also a Twins championship, this time over the Atlanta Braves, and in 2001 with the Arizona Diamondbacks defeating the New York Yankees. The World Series win was the first for the Twins franchise since 1924, when the team was located in Washington, D.C., and was known as the Washington Senators. This is the first World Series in which the series logo appeared on the jerseys, only the Cardinals wore it, however, while the Twins did not. Topic. Summary The 1987 World Series was notable in several regards, it featured the first World Series games played in an indoor stadium the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome and, to date, the last World Series game to start earlier than prime time in the eastern United States Game 6 would start at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Central Time, and it was the first World Series in which all games were won by the home team. Four previous series had the home team winning the first six games, including the 1965 World Series, when the Twins dropped Game 7 to the Dodgers. The bottom half of the ninth inning was never played in any game of this series, and this was the first and only time this has ever happened. In 1987, the Twins set the record for the worst full 162 game regular season win-loss record of any World Series championship team 85 to 77.525. This record stood until it was broken when the Cardinals won the 2006 series after going 83 to 78.516. However, the latter was due to the incorporation of a third division in each league which did not exist in 1987. Besides setting a record for the worst ever regular season winning percentage for a World Series winner and hosting the first ever World Series game indoors, the Twins were the first team to ever enter the World Series having been outscored in the regular season. The Twins, as a team, were pretty much outnumbered in virtually every major statistical category in 1987. As ABC play-by-play -play commentator Al Michaels put it in the pregame show for Game 1, they were out everything. The Cardinals posted a 95-67 record during the regular season, but were affected by injuries throughout the postseason, most notably with the loss of their lone home run threat, first baseman Jack Clark, due to a sprained right ankle suffered in a game in Montreal on September 9. During the regular season, Clark led the National League in both on-base percentage and slugging percentage despite playing in Bush Memorial Stadium, which was reputed to be the league's most extreme pitcher's park. He hit 35 home runs in 131 games, and was the only person on the team to hit more than 12. The player on the team who hit 12, starting third baseman Terry Pendleton, though named to the World Series roster, was hampered with a rib cage injury. Normally a switch hitter, Pendleton was only able to swing left-handed during the World Series and was also unable to play the field. The Cardinals replaced Clark on their World Series roster with 36-year-old Dan Dreesen, who was a starting Major League first baseman from 1977 through 1985, but was released by two organizations in 1986. The Cardinals had signed Dreesen to a minor league contract on June 9 and called him up to the majors on September 1. The 1987 World Series should go down in history as one of the least suspenseful World Series of all time even though it ran seven games. There were no extra inning games. No runs were scored in the ninth inning of any game. No runs scored in the eighth inning of any game caused a lead change, therefore this series might as well have been played in seven inning games. Only one game—number three, in St. Louis— 
featured a lead change in the seventh inning, and only two other games, Game 5 in St. Louis and Game 7 in Minneapolis featured a lead change in the sixth inning. Game 7 was the only game in which the teams were tied at the end of the fifth inning. Four of the games were essentially over by the fourth or fifth inning, as no scoring after that affected the outcome of those games. Yet there was controversy during the series concerning whether the Metrodome's technicians had been instructed by administration to turn the stadium fans on or off during gameplay to aid the Twins. It was revealed in 2003 that this had, in fact, occurred. Game 7 was won by Minnesota on the 35th birthday of the Twins' Roy Smalley, and was also the last game of his career. Smalley appeared in four games as a pinch hitter and reached base all four times on a double, an error, and two walks. Al Minnesota Twins vs. N.I. Street. Louis Cardinals 3. Topic: Matchups. Topic: Game One. A raucous, sold-out Metrodome met the Cardinals on October 17, stunning them at times with the sheer noise. The crowd noise in the Metrodome could exceed 110 decibels, which is about the same as what a jet plane makes when it takes off. Their play was marred with numerous mistakes brought by the Dome's fast astroturf and white roof. The Twins' aggressive play hardly helped the cards at all, and the game was a 10-1 blowout. Starting pitcher Frankie, sweet music, Viola put the lights out on the cards easily. Dan Gladden hit a grand slam and five RBIs, capping off a seven-run fourth inning and Steve Lombardozzi added another two-run shot. Kent HRBEK had two RBIs. Frank Viola was supposed to be the best man at his brother's wedding, but had to back out when the Twins reached the World Series, since it fell on the same night as Game 1, which he was scheduled to pitch. ABC showed clips of the wedding throughout the game's broadcast. <laughs> Game 2 While improving on their Game 1 performance, the Cards were unable to hold the Twins' offense again and fell behind 7-0 before beginning to rally. The Cards' total of nine hits was just one short of the Twins but their bats lacked power as they managed only one double against three doubles and two home runs hit by Minnesota. Gary Gaetti hit a homer in the second. The Twins broke the game open in the fourth, scoring six runs and chasing starter Danny Cox from the game. The final score was 8-4. Randy Bush and Tim Loudner each came through with a pair of two-run scoring hits in the fourth, with Loudner's being a home run and Bush's being a double. Bert Blylevin pitched seven innings of two-run baseball for the win. Topic. Game 3 Traveling down the Mississippi, to the open air of Bush Stadium, Game 3 saw a tense pitching duel between Twins starter Les Straker and John Tudor of the Cardinals. Les Straker was the first Venezuelan to pitch in the World Series. After five scoreless innings by both teams, the Twins broke through in the top of the sixth inning. Greg Gagne walked and Kirby Puckett got on base to move Gagne into scoring position. Tom Brunanski's RBI single looked like all the offense the game would see. But, in the bottom of the seventh, Juan Berenguer, in relief of Straker, surrendered leadoff back-to-back -back singles to Jose Oquendo and Tony Peña. Terry Pendleton sacrificed the runners to second and third, and Vince Coleman slammed a two-run double to give the Cards a 2-1 lead. Ozzie Smith followed by singling in Coleman for the final run, and Todd Worrell closed out the win for Tudor. Topic. Game 4 In Game 4, Tom Lawless hit a three-run homer off Viola only his second major league homer after going two for 25 during the regular season in the fourth inning, one of Viola's five earned runs in the game and six runs in the fourth. 
Just prior to Game 4, Reggie Jackson, who was working as a field reporter for ABC's coverage of the 1987 World Series, admitted that he didn't know who eventual Game 4 hero Tom Lawless was. <laughs> Game 5 Game 5 was a much closer ball game, but eventually the Cardinals were victorious, by a score of 4-2. Kurt Ford hit a two-run single in the sixth, breaking a scoreless pitcher's duel between Danny Cox and Burt Blylevin. By the end of the seventh, the cards were up 4-0. The Twins scored two in the eighth on a triple by Gary Gaetti off reliever Todd Worrell and made a game of it but eventually relinquished the save to him and Gaetti would not score. The Cardinals stole five bases in Game 5, the most for one team since the 1907 Chicago Cubs. <laughs> Game 6 The series returned to the Metrodome with the Twins facing elimination, a position they would find themselves in once more four years later against the Atlanta Braves. ABC allowed the game to be played at 3 p.m. CT 4 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday afternoon, the only day game of the series, and the last World Series game to date to be played in the daytime, although as the game was played in the Metrodome, the game took place under artificial illumination all the same. The Cardinals drew first blood off Les Straker on a Tommy Hare home run in the first, and the Twins counted with two in their half of the first on RBI singles by Kirby Puckett and Don Baylor. The Cardinals quickly tied it in the second on a Jose Oquendo RBI single. In the fourth, the Cards chased Straker when Dan Dreesen led off with a double to right and went to third on a Willie McGee single. McGee took second on the attempted throw home by center fielder Kirby Puckett. Terry Pendleton followed by singling home Dreesen and Oquendo hit a sacrifice fly to make it 4-2. Another run scored for the Cards in the fifth when lefty Dan Schatzadere walked Ozzie Smith, Smith went to second on a ground out, to third on a fly out, and scored on another McGee single. But, in the bottom of the fifth, the Twins began to claw back against John Tudor. Puckett led off with a single and was doubled in by Gary Gaetti. Benefiting from use of the designated hitter in their home ballpark, the Twins then tied it on a mammoth home run by their DH, Don Baylor. After Tom Brunanski followed with a single, the Twins took the lead for good when Steve Lombardozzi singled him with two out on a close play at the plate. The Twins then blew the game open in the sixth. Greg Gagne led off with an infield single and Puckett walked. A passed ball by Tony Pena advanced the runners. With first base open and one out, Cards veteran Bob Forsh intentionally walked Baylor to load the bases. After Brunanski popped out, left-hander Ken Daly was brought in to face the lefty hitting Kent HRBEK. HRBEK finally broke out of his batting doldrums and hit a grand slam. Brunanski drove in the final run in the eighth and the Twins had staved off defeat. Game 7 The 500th World Series game ever played, Game 7 forced a National Football League game between the Denver Broncos and the Minnesota Vikings, originally scheduled for that afternoon at the Metrodome, to be played the following night, also on ABC. Joe Magrain of the St. Louis Cardinals became only the sixth rookie pitcher to start the seventh game of a World Series. He also is the only pitcher in World Series history to start games 1 and 7 of a World Series without any starts in between. Magrain had actually started the 1987 season pitching for the Cardinals AAA team, the Louisville Redbirds. In the second, the Cardinals looked poised to send Frank Viola to an early shower. Three straight no-out singles by Jim Linderman, Willie McGee, and Tony Pena plated the first run. Viola settled down to retire the next two hitters, but then Steve Lake singled in McGee for a 2-0 lead. Viola would settle into a groove, however, and allow only two more hits and no runs in eight strong innings. 
The twins came back in their half of the second on a Steve Lombardozzi RBI single, but not before a missed call at home plate by umpire Dave Phillips had already cost the twins a run. Twins DH Don Baylor reached base on a hit by pitch by Magrain to lead off the inning and Tom Brunanski singled him to second. With one out, Tim Loudner singled to left and Baylor was gunned down at home by Vince Coleman in left, but replays clearly showed that Baylor was safe. Lombardozzi then singled in Brunanski. In the fifth, the Twins tied it when Greg Gagne reached on an infield hit and Kirby Puckett drove him in with a double. Incidentally, Cardinals fans believed replays showed Gagne to be out on his infield hit, thus this run served to counteract the run the Twins lost in the second on the missed call on Baylor at the plate. The Twins seemed on the verge of taking the lead when Gary Gaetti followed Puckett with a walk and went to second when Puckett was thrown out by Lake trying to advance to third on a wild pitch that was deflected when it hit the home plate umpire in the face mask. Baylor followed with a single to left, but Coleman threw out Gaetti at the plate in a violent collision with Lake. Coleman became the first outfielder to throw two runners out at the plate in one World Series game. The sixth inning proved to be controversial. In the top of the sixth, Tom Hare was picked off of first base, and tagged out in a rundown. In what Cardinals fans believe was the third missed call of the game, Hare got in the rundown and Lombardozzi ran him back to first where Kent Hrbek was standing off the bag near the base bath. Lombardozzi tossed the ball towards Hrbek and the ball sailed past him but into the glove of Viola behind the bag. Viola had come over to take part in the rundown. Hare was hindered by Hrbek returning to the bag, but clearly reached the bag safely before Viola tagged him. However, first base umpire Lee Weyer called Hare out. Weyer's view was blocked by Kent Hrbek and, according to the broadcast crew, Viola made the tag late and Hrbek should have been called for interference. Had this been called, Hare would have been safe, awarded second base, and the Cardinals would have had a runner at second with one out. As it was, the Cardinals would score nothing. The Twins then took the lead in the bottom of the sixth, off Danny Cox, who had relieved Magrain the previous inning. Cox walked Brunanski and Hrbek to lead off, and was replaced by Todd Worrell. As Cox was leaving, he got into an argument with home plate umpire Dave Phillips and was ejected as he was leaving the field. After retiring the first batter he faced, Worrell walked pinch hitter Roy Smalley and struck out Dan Gladden for the second out. The next batter, Gagne, reached first on an infield hit as Brunanski scored the go-ahead run. The Twins' final run came in the eighth on an RBI double by Dan Gladden off Worrell, who stayed in the rest of the game for the Cardinals. Jeff Reardon retired the side in the ninth to give Minnesota their first World Series victory. Twins manager Tom Kelly became the youngest non-playing manager to win the World Series since John McGraw in 1905. By winning in the regulation nine innings, the Twins ensured the 1987 World Series was the first in which no games needed the bottom of the ninth inning. No other World Series since then has had that happen. MLB. Com coverage of Game 7. Topic. Composite box 1987 World Series 4-3, Minnesota Twins AL over St. Louis Cardinals NL. Topic. Aftermath Although Steve Carlton was not on the Twins' playoff roster, he still attended the White House to be congratulated by President Reagan. While making a photo op with the president, local newspapers listed the names of all of the Minnesota Twins. The only man who wasn't listed and simply identified as a Secret Service agent was a tall man wearing dark sunglasses in the back. The man in question was Carlton. After their defeat in the 87 series, the Cardinals' reign of dominance in the 80s ended. They would not win their division again until 1996 and they would not return to the World Series until 2004. 
In 1988, the Twins actually won more games than in their championship season, finishing with a 91-71 record. They finished 13 games behind the Al West champion Oakland A's, who won 104 games. The Twins eventually sank towards the bottom of the standings, finishing last in 1990. In 1991, the Twins returned to the playoffs by beating the Blue Jays in the ALCS and winning what many call the greatest World Series ever played over the Atlanta Braves. The 1987 World Series featured at least two players who would go on to win Manager of the Year awards. The Twins' Don Baylor won it in 1995 for his work with the Colorado Rockies while the Cardinals' Tony Pena won it in 2003 for his work with the Kansas City Royals. The success of the 1987 Twins inspired Brandon Walsh Jason Priestley in Beverly Hills 90210 to explain why the Twins were the ultimate definition of a team, thus enabling him to win the Drea Scholarship. However, his interview included a factual inaccuracy. He said Gladden hit a grand slam in the pivotal Game 4, when in fact Gladden hit one in Game 1, and HRBEK hit one in the pivotal Game 6. In a February 2015 interview, sportscaster and author Al Michaels, who, as previously mentioned, did play-by-play -play for ABC's television coverage of the 1987 World Series, alleged the Twins pumped artificial crowd noise into the Metrodome during the 1987 World Series. Topic Notes Topic. See also 1987 Japan Series